sa buhay ko Ikayat pag-ibig ko'y ikaw Good morning everyone! Jeff, say this is it, ready? Dear family and friends, today we are gathered in this beautiful place for the purpose of witnessing this sacred rite of matrimony. We have been invited by both Jeff and Nanjeff and Lysa, and as they promised to share and celebrate their covenant and commitment of love with one another, Jeff and Lysa believe that they didn't meet by chance. They believe that God directed them to be in the same place at the same time, and it was God's will that helped them find each other. <coughs> And with that assurance, we are all grateful. Who gives this gorgeous woman to this handsome man in marriage? Yes, we do. We do. Thank you very much, Mom, sir. Marami salamat po. Mabuhay po kay Jan. Please take your seat. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 tells us that for this reason a man will leave his mother and father and be united to his wife and they become one flesh. Notice it says leave mom and dad so you can cleave and have your own family. You can weave. And at this moment I would like to call the Bible bearer to please come forward. Give us the chef. Alright. Can we give this young man uh, a round of applause. Ogin, yeah. <laughs> There's a side comment over there that says he's handsome. He's <laughs> handsome. <laughs> since, since Jeff and Lisel have committed their their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, so this wedding ceremony and this marriage will be based on the eternal. Word of God. His word, which we, which we can find in the Bible, is God's final authority for conduct, values, and belief. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at what God's word has to say about man and woman in marriage, we will also see that God has given us guidelines that if followed, we will ensure happiness in marriage and be ignored by produce misery. Having said that, let me just give you a quick thought about what marriage is all about. Now, uh, by the way, I'm for Kunana. I've been married for the last <laughs> 28 years. So I'm going to because that's the record. <laughs> I have two beautiful daughters, 27 and 22. They're both here. She's been here for the last 18 months. And I've known myself for one century. <laughs> Quite long. When I was a student, then taking up nursing. And really, he's also a classmate in high school, right? We have grown, we haven't grown, looking <laughs> <laughs> younger every time we say Anyway, number one, Mary is, is God's idea, not man. And we can find it in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, where God spoke to Adam and Eve. It says, it's not good for a man to be alone. And it says, I will make a helper suitable for him. It's so interesting that God himself pronounced that it's not good. For a man to be alone. Aaron, you're, you're, you're single? No. <laughs> okay. Your excuse, okay? And it means that if you're here today, you're single, then obviously it's God's will for you to be married. Especially you live in Canada, it's called the call. So you need somebody to keep you warm. <laughs> and again, it's, 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 it's really an honor to be married, to be with somebody. And it says, I will make a helper suitable. And I was adding the words helper. After the word helper, in layman's term, simply means the only person qualified to meet your need is the wife or the spouse of God given you. And interestingly, number two, it says marriage is, is, is a sacred covenant, not only a contract, it's a covenant. Okay? When you talk about contract, there's a way out in a contract. There's a stipulated there, stipulated that you can, but when you talk about Covenant in, in 
Malachi chapter 2, verse 14, it says, This marriage is not only based on contract, but covenant. Why? Because it's the Lord Himself, the Spirit, acting as the witness between you and your wife. And you. And, 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 and it says, marriage is, is just a stipulation or an agreement. It is a covenant. It's a sacred contract. And we are to put a high premium in it because God designed and created it. Remember, even in the natural contract, there's consequences when you violate this contract. That's why we are being encouraged and challenged by the scripture to put 100% of our effort. And it includes all of you here today as witness and sponsors and friends that make sure that this relationship will be strong, successful, happy, and you'll be commanded by the scripture as, 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 as friends and sponsors and relatives to make sure that we pray for them, encourage them, that they'll be the kind of purpose that God has designed them to be. It's like God's will for you. And lastly, marriage must be Christ-centered, not money, not self. And in Psalms 127, verses 1 and 2, again, I can read it. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in it. The, the, the word house there can mean uh, association, uh, fellowship. It can be a relationship like that's going on. You see, some marriages are child-centered, some are work-centered, some are self-centered, and some are spouse-centered. There's nothing wrong with that, but only until a spouse decides to make their marriage God-centered with the experience with success in marriage. Remember, Jesus, for this marriage to be successful, must be the foundation and the center of the relationship. Must, Jesus must not only be Lord, or sa but also Savior of the marriage. So, Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, that scripture basically summarizes to us why you want to get married. It simply says, you are supposed to honor God with your marriage and with the family that you are about to have. Colossians 2, 10 says, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head. You have the power and authority that it is. Okay. At this point in time, I would like to ask myself and Jeff to please stand up for Sorry for the exchanging of vows. Jeff, do you take the cell as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loved the church, to protect her and care for her for the rest of life? Then turn to her and make these vows I uh, wrote in April of last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than just from the heart. It's it's more it's more of a life of a journey. This is what I wrote. Bit long, but here we go. This journal is dedicated to my fiance and future wife, Jealousy. Dear Lord, I pray this journal will continue to impact me uh, just in this no way Angelus will impact it in my life. God brought her into our world. Lord, let uh, what I say in this book be driven by your grace and given for your glory. Lord, let this book uh, represent the life of Christ that's out of me in my life and puts his name and life this verse in everything I do. Lord, let this book guide me through letting God work and me through any prior sin. Lord, let this book guide me towards God's great in my life. Lord, let this book uh, and what I write in it shape me and move me to better Christ follower, husband, and my wife, <coughs> father to my children. And uh, this is what I get towards you. Most of all, I will come to God all my heart, mind, all my strength. I'll be a man before God and walk with integrity all the days of my life. For you, I want to love you and so in a way that makes sense to her each day in some specific way. And last, I'll cherish my wife for she is fragile and kind to be her partner for me. Wow. 
Do you still remember your vows, gentlemen? Jeff deserves a clap. It's a little member to say those words. And Sal, do you take Jeff as your husband? So do you think you shall be under the Lord? Show reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of the land? Turn to him and to turn to make vows. You made your vows last April. I <laughs> <laughs> made my vow just now. <laughs> <laughs> Today, as I'm marrying you, my best friend, my Canadian home, my dude, I am certain that I have honored my God, who has been and forever going to be the first love of my life. He has been there filling me with love, grace, and joy when I was waiting for the right man. He answered my prayer when I asked him to give me a man who will love him more than me. I specifically asked him to give me a man who loves God, with blue eyes, with beard, tall, <laughs> and who is passionate kids and you, and someone who is not super brain. And God gave you. Next to God, you are the reason why I'm here in Canada. You gave me home and love and support and helped me with my homesickness. There have been lots of challenges that have happened to me in the past and until now, but I know God has a purpose why He brought me here in Canada, the country I always know I'm going to live in someday. It's you. My blessing. Today, as I'm marrying you, I'm not only signing a contract, but I'm entering into a covenant with God to honor you as my husband, to give you respect and love. As we live and cleave together, I promise that I will submit to you serve you and support you. I will do my best to be the Proverbs 31 wife, <laughs> to be your best friend, your wife, and your dude. That I promise you forever and ever. Amen. Mom, 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 choo, choo. So help me, God. And by God's grace, we're going to go through life together, honoring Him. I love you, honey, mom. <laughs> I want you to place this ring on Jeff's finger with these things in mind. There's no place <coughs> that gives you the right to dominate one another. Your vows have stated that you are to submit to one another in the responsibilities of life, expecting God and His power to make the difference. So place this ring on Jeff's finger. Hold 
the coin sponsor to this come to work. Jason, is that you? Wow, coin, coin represent God's love of provision of your life. Deuteronomy 8, 18 tells us that remember the Lord your God, for it gives you the ability to produce well. So to confirm his covenant with his word before Father. As, as, as Jeff and Sarah started a new life together as married couple, they are acknowledging that the Lord Jesus Christ will provide for all their needs. And that they will honor the Lord with the first fruit of their life. Sarah, as you receive this treasure from Jeff, you are the Jeff's transparent responsibility, the first one to responsibility to you. Yeah, you are acknowledging that together, my faith will raise your time. Philippians 4 19 in the year. You all know it says, Your God will supply all your hands. Not according to Sandra, but according to <coughs> His glory and Christ Jesus. And over the above, whatever you earn, it's God's good for you to have peace in life. Remember, God is the page you have in God is the things in you. So if you see the first scheme that is righteousness, the provision that God has promised to husband and wife and his parents on this floor, remember, don't forget that. It's the offer and the finish of this relationship. Amen. Can you see now? The veil sponsor, AJ and Camille. Jesus, that really cleanses mm. 
are six ones and four balls. Isn't that amazing?